And welcome back to The Coach's Perspective. We're covering all of Riverside High School football and Riverside City College football this season. We have 20 games on the docket, five for RCC. And I tell you what, I couldn't be happier covering high school and college football again for Riverside TV. I'm Jeff Gorham, I'm your host. And today we're join, joined by the great John Rice at Riverside Poly High School. How you doing, Coach? Doing great, thanks for having me. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a, a weird couple of years. We haven't been in the studio for a while. I think uh, you and I are socially distancing uh, via um, Zoom or whatever they call it. And I want to say this, it's nice to see you back, Coach, and it's great to have high school football back in Riverside. How are you feeling? The glass is half full, that's for sure. I mean, that was a struggle for everybody last year, but we made it happen because a lot of people were determined and we did what we could for each other. So. We appreciate that we're able to open up a little bit. I know we're cautious, but we're going forward, and I'm just glad that we're able to try to get back to some kind of normalcy, uh, even if it's a little bit at a time. Yeah, before we get into the actual football stuff, let's talk a little bit about the, the COVID uh, restraints, I should say, and the protocols that you guys are dealing with. What is it like on a day-to-day -day basis for a high school uh, football program here in Southern California? Well, in, in River, L.A. County is a lot different than we are. In Riverside County, we still take temperatures. The kids come on, we take temperatures. We don't have to wear a mask outside, but we do try to keep social distance. Part of our practice, some of the things left over from last spring are we still stretch in, uh, in formations and take 100 yards to stretch, so we're social, we are social distance. Um, we just try to be more aware about washing our hands and, and just not coughing on each other, just – you know, the restrictions have, have softened a little, but in the classroom, the protocols are still the same. I mean, the kids get their temperatures taken before they get to school. Um, and if there are anybody who, who self-reports, then they do contact tracing, and that includes everybody in the class. And so potentially people are just one phone call away, one class away from, from being um, quarantined. And so we're just blessed to have one this week's game. I'm just looking at it like, let's try to play one week at a time, control the controllables, and then hopefully we can get a season in. Now with Riverside Unified, are there testing procedures or are players being tested occasionally? Um, I don't know of any plans to do that now, uh, but, but we could be ready. That could change very quickly. Um, if, 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 there, if we get a recommendation from the county uh, health director, then um, you know we tested last week on Mondays. Um, but we're ready to do that whenever whenever we uh, get an order to do that we'll be ready to do it so until they until they tell us to do that all we can do is control what we do on the field tell the kids to be smart we don't let them come to practice and we tell them if you're sick at all you have a fever you don't feel good let us know and we keep them home we just out of an abundance of caution now coach you guys went two and two in an antiquated season last year um but i'll tell you what watching you guys play in the let's say the spring, which is weird to say, uh, it seems like you guys had turned the corner on really getting this program really uh, rearing back to the way it used to be uh, for Riverside Poly. Yeah, this is a, this is a, you gotta have some big shoulders to be at Poly. If you really care about football and, and care about Poly, the amount of alumni in Riverside and uh, the greatness that Poly used to have. And so we just decided that we were gonna hold kids accountable and um, teach them life skills and, and have a great work ethic and build relationships with the kids. And so this is my third year. The kids that we started with as ninth graders are now juniors. Last spring, we only had 12, 13 seniors who graduated. So we played a lot of 10th graders. And so that, that experience is invaluable. So this year we, only have, we have 12 seniors. And so we are still gonna be young, but uh, we feel like we're really close to turning the corner. Yeah, mentioning those alumni, I've been talking to a few guys around town, and they are saying some positive things about Riverside Poly football, which is great to hear. Last season, in the spring season, you had, I think you said, 40-plus uh, students uh, playing freshman and JV, or freshman sophomore football, and you guys were uh, tremendously successful with that young group, weren't you? I think we had 52. We had frosh off schedule, which was a little disappointing because we – take a lot of pride in having three levels the, the, the deal is you want to have three levels so that the kids play 10 games if they can when there's freshmen they want to play 10 games as JV players so when they get to the varsity they've played 20 games so we were unable to do that 
uh, unfortunately, because a lot of people didn't have the numbers, so we combined them. We had about 52. We had uh, 35 freshmen and about 18 sophomores that we, we played down. And um, they went 5-0, and and they did a really good job. Um, we started to build a winning uh, spirit, and those kids now expect to win. So we're excited to have that group come up. And so we have, you know, like 50 of those kids coming up to play with us now. Now, at, by the end of last season, uh, what was the buy-in like from then to now? Was What did you guys do to prepare for this season? Oh, my gosh. We, we couldn't lift. You know, every, everybody was in the same boat. Well, I wouldn't say everybody, but we – we didn't lift. We we could not go in the weight room. And then there was construction in the summer, and so we brought all the weights out onto the field. So all summer we had an outdoor our own our own weight program. So the biggest buy-in was for weight room because we got pushed around last year. There was no doubt about it. We we had not been in the weight room for a long time. So the biggest buy-in we had was in the weight room. Uh, and so we're, we're not there yet, but we're on the way. Well, Coach, let's talk a little bit about this season. Um, you have a full 10-game slate. You've got a great uh, schedule. You're playing some rivals. I see you've got Arlington. You've got uh, King. You have Ramona. You've got the, the old rivals that Riverside Poly always played. But tell us a little bit about this uh, new Riverside Poly team in your third season. Um, we The biggest thing I can say is that we just scrimmaged Heritage and Muria and Mesa or very physical teams. And we were very, very happy with that. We stood up and, and, and went, we ran the ball right at them and we didn't back down and we had some success on both sides of the ball. So I think that is direct translation to what we do in practice. We, we are high intensity at practice, a lot of physical competition and it carried over. And I think that was the first time the staff really saw them play up to a higher level than we have been in the past. So we're hoping to carry that forward. So we have a lot of young players that um, have grown with us as far as expectations, work ethic, um, our core values, being responsible, accountable, uh, being selfless, putting team first, all that stuff that good programs do. So we're, we need to do some things on the field and teach them and expect them to win and not hope to win. To me, that's the biggest difference. You. You want to win, and there's that gray area where you're, you may, you might win. They think they might win, but you got to go on the field every week and expect to win. And so that's what we're trying to get to this year. Now, are there any guys on offense that you kind of want to uh, talk about that we can see coming up uh, this week during their game? Sure. Sure. We have a sophomore, Tajon Henderson, whose brothers have played at Poly, and he's a 10th grader, and he'll be on the field on offense and defense. He'll start at corner, and he'll play some H back, some running back. He's the dynamic player. You just got to keep your eye on him. And uh, Angel uh, Sanchez plays linebacker and, and running back, and he he had some great carries and averaged about 10 yards a carry in the scrimmage, just running straight downhill. Um, and then we're going to go probably with two quarterbacks. Neither one of them have really outright won the job yet, and that's Michael Luna, who's also a starting linebacker, and Will Cloak Jr., who's a junior. So, and then uh, Bailey Brown is back and we're very excited to have Bailey. He's gonna be all over the field on both sides of the ball. So I think those are the guys for us. We just have to get, it's not, it's not rocket science to me. It's you gotta get the ball to your playmakers and, and get it to them in space and, and ride the horses who got you there. Now coach, uh, talking about your preseason schedule, was it part of the, the mindset as you wanted to play as many, you know, the Riverside schools, the rivalries, was that something you brought in? I think so. I think it's good for Riverside football. Um, and there was a little opposition. Uh, I think you need to upgrade your schedule a little, strategically upgrade your schedule when you're trying to improve the program. You, you want to reach a little bit above where you think you're at and not too far, not overreach. Um, so we were a little bit limited. You have two-year contracts. Hillcrest was definitely deliberate to, to schedule them. Coach Branham did a good job, and now Coach Carter. So we definitely want to play them. And then um, – you know, we want to play the Riverside schools. I think it's great. So I'm glad we're playing Arlington. Um, it's first year of a two-year contract, and we'll see what happens after that. And then we're locked into Ramona and King. And then the other uh, opening we had was we found Sultana. So finding a schedule, you got to start in January, and then you got to match puzzle pieces and find out who has openings. And then it's about who's who. Are, you have to have five home games. You got to have five away games. So there's big a big scramble to fit the puzzle pieces so you can get a schedule put together. Now, Coach, talking about that other team you're going to play Friday night, Hillcrest, the defending River Valley League champions, 
Great athletes, got a good coach. What have, have you scouted them? What have you heard about uh, the Trojans? Yes, the I know the programs well. I've seen them on video last year. They did a fantastic job with that program, and they continue to do that. And then uh, I went to see them scrimmage in person uh, last Thursday against Santiago and Los Osos. Great, it, it, very physical. A great, a, a nice young running back who runs hard, cuts the ball outside. Quarterback is very feisty, runs the ball. Very, a great athlete. Uh, good, strong defense, very good, strong defense. So they're going to be a challenge for us. Um, we're glad to be to be on the field, and we're looking forward to the challenge. I'm sure it's going to be a great ball game. Now, Coach, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that you get uh, to coach your son. He's a junior this year. What's that like? I mean, do, do you yell? I see, I played for my dad for a bit, and he used to chase me around the, fee, the court and field. What's it like? What's that dynamic like uh, coaching your son? Well, I think we talked about that, and I talked to several people um, before he was a freshman, and I knew that I did not want football to come between us. I and I hear he understood from the beginning not he didn't have to play. He was a late bloomer. He started playing. He played a couple years, and then I just didn't want to be his per, his position coach. And a lot of friends told me that they were coaching. Coach your son, but don't be his position coach. Have that have that ride home be about how his day was. So um, I haven't been his position coach. Um, I'm appreciating it more. I'm kind of coming. This is my 38th year. He's a junior. Um, every day is a blessing. Every season is a blessing. So, you know, I have a commitment this year to just enjoy my son and be in the moment a little bit when he's on the field in between drills and games and riding home because that's going to go and pretty soon it's going to be gone. Five quick questions. You got to answer them fast. Okay. In and out or five guys? Oh my gosh, what's five guys? Exactly. Are you kidding me? In and out. Exactly. Okay, your favorite literary character ever? Um, I would say Yago from Othello. Ah, that's pretty good. Okay, Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Trek. Star Trek. That's a, that's a original, good one. Original Star Trek. Original, so William Shatner. And then, yep, and, then, and then, Coach, last but not least, who's your best friend in the world? My wife. That's great to hear, Coach. Love catching up with you. We're really excited about Friday night as we see your Bears versus the Trojans of Hillcrest on Riverside TV. He's John Rice. I'm Jeff Gorham. And we'll see you Friday night, Coach. And good luck and have a great night. Go Bears. See, I should have worn my, my orange or green. I went Ramona it's Blue. Cool. I'm sorry. It's, 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 yeah. it's Next old time. Head. Next time, Coach. Next time. And welcome back to the Coach's Perspective here on Riverside TV. We were just joined by head coach John Rice of Riverside Poly. Now we're joined by the head coach of the opposing team, the Hillcrest Trojans, Travis Carter. How you doing, coach? Nice to see you again. Doing good, Jeff. How you doing, man? I appreciate you guys uh, having us on and covering Riverside sports, especially football. You guys do a great job. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to cover 20 high school football games. We're going to have five RCC football games. So we're going to be everywhere this season. We're going to be covering the Trojans a few times. But the first one we're covering is this Friday night, as you guys are battling a old-time Riverside foe, Riverside Poly. Man, I bet you're really, you've got to be excited to kind of get going since we've been through this COVID the last 18 months, a shortened season. I bet you're excited. Yeah, I mean, we are incredibly excited. The kids, apologies, I got the bell going on That's in the okay. background there. But the, the kids are excited. They're, uh, you know, definitely anxious to get out there and play and play against another team. And we're an extremely young team with a, a lot of kids trying to prove themselves. Um, you know, we had that short spring season and, you know, quick turnaround, kind of a shortened off season as well. But it's exciting to to be back on campus right now, kind of somewhat normal and, you know, get high school sports rolling again. So we're excited. Well, you guys are the defending River Valley League champions. You guys had a great uh, shortened season last year. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about what what the difference between last year's team and this year's team is? Uh, I would say that the biggest difference is just our overall age and experience. So in the spring, I want to say we started 17, 18 seniors. Uh, it was one of, you know, the, the better senior classes we've had here at Hillcrest, uh, you know, probably the last five or six years. 
Um, so this year we got a bunch of young kids that are, are talented and hungry. They're just, you know, inexperienced. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch and see just exactly what we have, um, out there on the field, but the kids have been, you know, they've been working together. Um, we don't have, you know, a bunch of star players. We just got a bunch of kids that, you know, are going to work hard and, and, and do the best they can together as a team. So they're really coming together this off season as a family. It's been exciting to watch. Well, Coach, this is your third year, I believe, at, at the helm of the Trojans. Uh, what, if, what is the hardest thing that you've, you've had to learn in those first uh, two-plus years so far? Oh, wow, that, that could be a whole nother show. But, yeah, it's uh, – I mean, there's always going to be something popping up um, unexpected. And so kind of the thing I've learned, this, you know, these first three years is, you know, it, it doesn't matter how much you prepare – um, kind of, you know, for every scenario or, you know, something different is going to pop up, you know, each and every day, each and every week that you're going to have to react to um, as a coaching staff, as a team. So it's especially this year, especially with COVID um, and, you know, the last spring season and then this season as well, it's been just kind of adapt and, and do the best you can with the circumstances you're given. Now, now what's harder, coaching a high school football team or dealing with the COVID protocols on a daily basis? You know what the 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 protocols the kids have been the first we're two weeks into school now and the kids have no issue with them i mean i'm looking around campus we're masking indoors and the, and the kids just they're glad to be back talking with their friends again at school uh playing sports after school doing you know band after school cheer whatever it is they got to do so i think um the kids have you know they might not like it but it's better than the alternative of sitting at home staring at a computer screen so the kids have been pretty good with it um and I mean, high school football, it's, you know, yeah, it's a lot to prepare for, but I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity we have here. Now, coach, uh, you guys are in a really t uh, tough River Valley league. You got Ramona, you've got uh, Norta Vista, you've got yourselves. Uh, Arlington is, you know, coming into the mix, uh, finally full-time this season. Um, wh how do you anticipate your league is going to be this year? I mean, you've got some pretty tough opponents. Yeah, I think the league's going to be pretty solid uh, top to bottom this year. I mean, obviously, Norta Vista, they have, you know, they kind of have the most dynamic athletes coming back, uh, maybe the most experienced coming back. Um, but Ramona, just, you know, looking back from last year, Ramona's got some talent coming back, and their their lower-level team had some good size on it. Uh, Patriot, they played a ton of young guys in the spring, um, got some good experience out of those kids, so that's going to benefit them as well. And you know, I know Arlington had some good young talent last year as well. And then La Sierra is going to be much improved as well. You know, they played a ton of young guys who got a lot of good experience in the spring. Um, that's definitely going to help them, you know, coming into this, this season. Well, it's going to be nice because we're going to be able to cover a lot of those River Valley League teams on Riverside TV this year. But let's talk about your team. Let's talk about some of the players on the offensive side of the football that we can look for come Friday night. Yeah, so the, the first thing uh, – offensively is you're not going to see a single kid in the skill positions that was a full-time starter last year. It's going to be a bunch of uh, younger guys, you know, kind of their first opportunity to show everybody what they got. Uh, where we do have some experience is going to be the offensive line, and that's going to be kind of uh, the, the strong point of our offense this year. Um, coming back, we got Malu Tata, uh, who, who's, he's been a starter since a sophomore. He's a big kid, and, you know, he's going to play both ways for us at guard and, and some nose tackle. Uh, Daniel Smith, who's a junior, he's coming into his second year as a starter. Um, we got Isaac Antolin, who he's a junior as well, coming into his second year as a starter. So up front, uh, we got some experience coming back. We're still relatively young, just one senior uh, on the offensive line, but some kids with some playing experience. And then at the receiver and running back position, we're kind of looking to see who's going to step up. So we got kind of, you know, two guys at each spot. We're kind of see who's going to pull ahead of um, you know the other person and uh, these first few weeks of the preseason um, and then at quarterback you're going to see uh, Caleb Dominguez he played a little bit of slot receiver for us last year and you know some backup quarterback and he, you know he's had a good summer he's he's getting better every every day he's you know smaller kid but you know pretty athletic throws a decent ball so offensively it'll be kind of step up and see who's going to be the guy you know who's going to replace some of those guys we lost from the last season well you know last season I think the last time you and I talked was right after that uh, Norta Vista game when you guys really, really played great defense against that double wing, you know, the, the, the beat up smash mouth football. 
uh, that Nordic Vista gave you. But I thought your defense was really a stalwart uh, for you know the entire year. Can you talk a little bit about uh, th that side of the football coming into this season? Yeah, so uh, defensively, I think we're looking, uh, you know, pretty solid right now. Obviously, we have a ton of work to do, um, you know, program-wide in general. But again, defensively, we're, you're going to see a lot of new faces out there this year. Uh, the secondary is going to be led by Jonathan Prado, who he started at safety for us last year, uh, was a big part of, you know, that spring season and a big part of, you know, the success we had last year. Uh, but you're going to see some new, new faces, you know, at defensive back or other safety uh, – Trey Williams, we're looking for him to step up both at some receiver and some DB. Um, but I like our young core. So the guys we got coming in that are kind of replacing those guys we had last year, um, they're young, but they're, you know, they love football. They, they work hard. Um, and it's going to be very uh, fun, in my opinion, to watch what some of these guys develop into. Um, I think we got a good linebacking core. I think we got a pretty solid defensive line. And I think what's most exciting is we got a lot of growth potential there. Uh, we're just kind of tapping the surface of what those players can be. Now, Coach, let's really zero in on your opponent this Friday. Riverside Poly, great coaching staff. You've got John Rice, you've got Bill Powell, two legends that are really kind of turning that program around. What do you see about Riverside Poly that could cause some problems uh, for the Trojans? Well, just looking at their film, you know, kind of from the spring to – uh, their scrimmage, you can see the improvements that they've made, uh, you know, over the summer. Um, they, they're very well coached. You can tell on both sides of the ball, both offensively, defensively. Um, I think they're pretty good up front, which is, you know, a good thing. But it's going to be, you know, it's going to be kind of interesting, you know, just not having a lot of film to go off of. You just got, you know, one scrimmage. And they just have one scrimmage off us. Um, you know, a bunch of new faces, I think, on both sides of the ball. But it's, it's definitely going to be an exciting game. You know, I, when we, we scheduled the game, I knew, you know, John Rice, a great coach. And I, I've talked to him several times. He's a, he's a great person, just, you know, loves the profession, loves, you know, the kids loves helping other coaches. He's been, you know, awesome. The few times I've talked to him and he's doing a great job over there. You can tell that they're, they're very well coached on both sides of the ball. And it, it's going to be, you know, kind of exciting to go into this game and see what's going to happen. Well, Coach, it's, I'm really looking forward to covering you guys all season long. Uh, I've enjoyed watching your first couple of years as the head coach of Hillcrest. But before we go, a couple quick questions for you. you got to answer them fast, and you got to answer them as honest as possible. Okay, here we go. All right. Favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time, Training Day. Okay. Bakers or Del Taco? Bakers. Longest touchdown you ever threw while being a quarterback? Oh, I don't know about that one. Probably not very long. Not very long. It was, it was a, more of a, a little shuttle pass or a, a handoff. But, okay. And yeah, then, I, I, I probably threw it three yards and someone else probably ran at the rest. So. Okay. And then here's, here's the final two. Your ultimate dream job if it wasn't in football. Ultimate dream job if it wasn't in football. That is a tough one. Um, I don't know. I've never been asked that before. Um, there's no job you've ever wanted to do that you like being a dolphin trainer or anything. What what would be your? You know what? When I growing up, I, I thought about being like a fighter pilot. I had an uncle who did that, and I always thought that was pretty cool. But I mean, we got we are so lucky. High school football coaches, you know, especially the ones who are to be teachers on campus and coach football after school. I mean, you, I don't think you can beat this job. No, I agree. In fact, uh, the only bad thing is you have to deal with Ken Batendorf, who's been at Nordic Vista for, I think, I could be wrong, like 74 years. So you don't want to be stuck in a place that long because then you end up like Ken Batendorf. But other than that, Coach, thank you uh, for your time, your, your, your energy. We look forward to seeing the game Friday night. Gazal Hassan and myself will be on the call as Polly takes on Hillcrest at 7 p.m. on Riverside TV. Thanks, Coach, for joining us, and good luck this year. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. See you Friday. All righty, buddy. Thanks a lot.